Are you working on a design that needs to swap between charging protocols? What about a design that needs to switch between a main power supply and a backup power supply? Yeah, I bet a lot of you out there are working on some kind of design that could be included in either of those categories. So, you undoubtedly already know that power multiplexing is required for these kind of applications. But what about power multiplexing using a high side gate driver? Well, look at that. This is exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Power multiplexing is a vital design requirement for a variety of different applications today. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I chat with Talia Sederi from Toshiba about what kind of power multiplex solution would be a best fit for your next design. We discuss five unique considerations that we should think about when it comes to power multiplexing and the benefits that high side gate drivers bring to power multiplexing. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Toshiba. Hi, Tala. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's great talking to you today. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about power multiplexing with discrete components today. But Tala, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? So today I'm thrilled to share some of our latest technologies in power multiplexing with a discrete products. I'm going to cover some of the why we should use a high side gate driver, how to create an ideal power multiplexing or power o-ring solution five of the unique design challenges that you mentioned, and finally, some helpful key takeaways from our presentation. Excellent. So to start off, what kind of challenges do we need to consider when making a high voltage power multiplexing here, especially when using a high side gate driver? Basically, in any application, such as consumer or industrial that will require a power supply, there are a set of challenges and trade-offs to consider during the design. During our discussion, I'll point out some of the aspects to keep in mind, such as the trade-off between the power and space, excess current inrush, SOA, and how to tackle these challenges using the high side MOSFET gate driver. Excellent. So Tala, what kind of applications would benefit from this kind of power multiplexing? Two application types can benefit from a power mux solution or a power o-ring solution, depending on the charging requirements. Power muxing or power o-ring is used when we need to switch between the main power supply and to the backup power supply, or in the case of applications with multiple charging protocols, for instance, connecting to the charger while using a device, making the transition seamless. In the case of applications that continuously need to be on, such as point of sales devices or notebook PCs, security and detectors with backup during outage, servers, memory, and SSD devices, the power mux would make the transition effortlessly. The common denominator in all these applications is that their output goes to a DC-DC converter or a PMIC device. The power muxing solution is also great when it comes down to efficient charging. For example, wearable devices, smartphones, smart speakers, IoT devices, or even automotive infotainments that may need to be charged while in use. The concept for this type is that we need to break up a power line before introducing a new line with new voltage with different power protocols. So where would this kind of power multiplexing be used? What kind of solutions would use this technology? Yeah, let's look at some reasons of why to use these high side gate driver ICs. The primary objective here is power sequencing. There are multiple different design choices available in the market. To name a few, you may use a fully integrated power mux, which is essentially an IC block with two inputs of let's say V in A and V in B, and the flag or control logic that decides which one of these inputs to pass through to V out. 
but there are limitations in what you can do and how much flexibility you would have. Another method might be in order to have more flexibility, you could use a less integrated solution by using two similar devices, such as load switches. It will require more effort from the designer to control the power sequencing, as well as a compatibility analysis of types of components to use and even ramp up or startup speed. An engineer may prefer this method because on the value of the customization, however, more parameters must be considered during the design and many additional test cases has to be kept into account. Another method that would be one of our recommendation would be utilizing an entirely discrete solution by implementing driver IC and a FET along with the other components such as Zener diodes and capacitors. So what are the benefits and advantages of using a fully discrete solution? The main advantage here would be higher power. In this particular solution, we are taking the design to the next level and creating a solution that would increase the power considerably with an efficient power mux or power o-ring solution. Okay, so Tala, can we dig into the details of these different mux solutions? Where do you see the real benefits coming into play? So here are a list of pros and cons of fully integrated versus semi-integrated power mux solution. In the case of a fully integrated solution, the main advantage is saving design space. As you know, these days, the board space is extremely important for design engineers. Most likely, multiple features are already embedded and power sequencing has already been addressed. Even though many features are already built in, most of these features are predetermined, meaning that it would be challenging to make any adjustment and it will be costly for any customization later in the design. So is there a drawback for higher voltages? Absolutely. The major drawback is at the higher voltages, such as like 12 volt battery or a 24 volt or higher, because if you're, let's say, running at a power level of 3.3 or 5 volt, you easily can make any changes. However, if you want to move to higher voltages, that's where the main problem comes in. So the main problem with the solution is if it is going to be used for higher power of, let's say, 12 to 24 volts, if originally we designed for much lower power, the engineer has to decide between the IC chip size versus their desired RDS on and its trade-off to the isolation voltage and power loss. So is there a cost advantage here as well? Sure. So similarly, this integrated solution and the semi-integrated, they both have exponentially more expensive when it comes down to higher voltages. Now, let's explain about the semi-integrated O-ring device. If we have multiple power lines, we can add a couple of load switches to handle the power switching between them. An important aspect here, though, is to make sure to have true reverse current blocking, which is why it is highlighted here because of the voltage difference. If you have one power at 5 volt and the other one at, let's say, 24 volt, getting a reverse current is inevitable. So to name other challenges, this solution requires very accurate switch timing to avoid any dead time. So as you alluded earlier, this solution also could get exponentially more expensive at higher voltages. So overall, what is the most optimal solution or what's your recommendation here, Tala? Our recommendation for the most customization and optimal device and design is a discrete solution consisting of a driver IC and the N-channel FET on each input and perhaps a few Zener diodes and transistors. Using discrete MOSFETs in this method will give us the capability to scale FETs and voltages as opposed to some ICs since they use different processes. Therefore, different voltage FETs can be used without driver IC adjustment in the design. Switching time can also be adjusted at any point in the design. However, it would require more effort from the design engineer. We'll discuss how to handle the dead time later in our discussion today. So what is the main high point or benefit of this solution? 
Here's a simple summary table that compares each of these methods. As you can see, MOSFET gate driver IC has the most benefit in terms of current capability, high voltage support, and of course, most customization. In terms of space, it is similar to semi-integrated, but fully integrated is the most space-saving solution if only used for low voltage switching and no customization required. Okay, Tala, let's get into the details of these power muck circuits. What kind of FET load switch configurations do I have? So let's discuss how to build a power O-ring and what specific kind of MOSFET would be required. A critical part of a power muxing circuit is your MOSFET, which has a unique superpower in handling the muxing job. We can think of three different configurations. So let's start from the low right-hand side. You have the option of a single N-channel FET. The second option is a back-to-back -back common drain. And the last one is a back-to-back -back common source. So why do you use N-channel? Is there an advantage of using N-channel versus P-channel? Essentially, the N-channel FET has a higher power density compared to P-channel. N-channel has a lot more variety in voltage offering than P-channel. In the interest of time, let's look more closely at the trade-off of using a back-to-back -back common drain versus back-to-back -back common source. So, Tala, what kind of benefits are we looking at when it comes to Toshiba's gate driver ICs? Toshiba offers a variety of MOSFETs and particularly FETs to drive an IC application, focusing on low quizzing current, a wide range of operating voltage, package sizes, low cost, and various protection functions. Now let's turn to how it works. Okay, so can we take a closer look at these MOSFET gate driver ICs? Absolutely. So in this block diagram, you see a driver IC which in this case works as a charge pump. First, the voltage regulator regulates the supply voltage for the internal circuit. The oscillator drives a charge pump and it takes the voltage from the regulator, increases it and feeds it to the V gate, biasing it based on the V in and V source. So as a result, it drives the gate of the external N channel MOSFET and turns it on. Also, inrush current is limited by the slew rate control circuit. Okay, so earlier you mentioned common source MOSFET driver ICs. What does Toshiba have in this arena? Toshiba offers a variety of driver ICs. TCK Force Zero series have both active high and active low, which can be used for driving either an N channel FET or a common source FET. It comes with a wide VN and uses a charge pump in a small package. It offers maximum input of 40 volt and it has features such as over voltage lockout and under voltage lockout and auto output discharge. I'll talk about the importance of it when discussing the maintaining the SOA. We highly recommend this driver for common source configurations. Okay, so what about common drain MOSFET driver ICs you mentioned earlier? What does Toshiba have here? TCK42 series is recommended for common drain configurations. It has similar maximum input and drives the FET up to 10 volt with similar features as the TCK40 series. The other advantage of this part, it has five different voltage for over voltage lockout. And what makes this part extra special is that we separated the gate pins. So Tala, what kind of design challenges do you anticipate here? Let's move on to some of those challenges. So what about power versus space? So what do we need to think about here? Let's begin with the trade-off between the power versus space or power density comparisons using P-channel versus N-channel. For example, in a circuit where you have similar RDS on FETs, you see that P-channel is about double in size compared to N-channel when it comes down to comparing their power density. The back-to-back N-channel -back FETs on the bottom right side that you can see, it comes in a much smaller chip scale package than even a common source. In the case of common drain, the drains are connected together, giving you maximum power and value for your money. However, in the case of common source, you can see that it takes more space due to how 
these fats connect to the source pin. So what about voltage assortment? Is there a benefit in using N-channel versus P-channel? Yeah, N-channels have a lot more variety in voltage offering than P-channel. So what about common source versus common drain? What do we need to keep in mind here? If we want to compare common source configuration versus drain common configuration and look at the nitty-gritty details, you will notice a few subtle differences. For example, in the case of source common, the sources are inside of the two FETs, which makes the biasing of the gates easier simultaneously. Whereas for drain common FETs, if the sources are outside, you will need a separate connection in order to bias the gates to get the same gate source bias. The other concern is that the gates are exposed and there is an ESD risk. Another advantage of source common is that if you had a surge at, let's say, V in B, while the FETs are off, it would not damage the gate since it is inside and protected by the body diodes facing outside. Nevertheless, you will need to use multiple FETs, which will inevitably increase your bomb count. Now, let's look at other benefits. Here's another benefit of using the Toshiba TCK4 series. Inrush or surge current usually is caused when there is a voltage spike and it will damage the component. So TCK4 series has a built-in slew rate control, allowing for a slower rise. You can see this by comparing the left figure versus the right figure. The example without the slew rate control has a fast turn on causing the high inrush current on the second line on the left, and ultimately you see the voltage rise on the output. However, in the example on the right with a slew rate control, you have a smooth curve and well-regulated output voltage. This inrush current consideration is crucial for a design since many design engineers may not necessarily consider it until late in the game during prototyping and will notice power cycling and irregularities in the output voltage. So you also mentioned safe operation area. Can you explain that a bit more? Sure. Safe operating area or SOA is another important key feature to be mindful of when selecting a driver IC. TCK4 series has a built-in fast discharge function. When your device turns off, it creates power dissipation if it is not fast enough. If you notice on the left waveform, it has the intersection of drain source voltage and drain current. It compares example A, which the turn on and off waveform, versus example B, and the area under the curve, which in this case is the power dissipation. As you can see, the area is much smaller for example A versus B. The middle graph compares the time it takes to discharge. And obviously, it is critical for applications using high voltage to discharge the large capacitance on the gate very quickly. Toshiba Driver IC TCK4 series offers a discharge pin, which quickly discharges the gate capacitance when you turn off the FET. The slow rise, reducing inrush current and quick switch off will reduce power loss, which both allows the MOSFET to operate safely. Okay, so previously you mentioned power sequencing. How does that come into play? Can you give us an example of that? Yeah, there are two different charging power configuration for applications such as servers and memory versus seamless charging from the wall charger to another forum, like let's say wireless headphones during power swapping. So let's begin with break before make. In this case, you'll need to turn one power off and then turn the other one on to avoid both running simultaneously. So what ends up happening is if you have a five volt rail and a 12 volt rail, you will turn off the five volts. As you can see, the V out goes to zero. The engineer have to define some safe dead time. And after that, the 12 volt battery will turn on. This will protect your circuit and prevents power overlap. Another configuration is make before break. Now let's say you have similar voltage power supplies 
And for continuously power on applications that sometimes need to go on a backup, such as, for example, let's say detectors that needs to be on and it goes back to the backup if the power goes out. And ideally, we would like to have a seamless power switching in this case. The V in A, which is the primary power supply here, is 5 volts. If the V in A gets cut off, we don't want any dead time for voltage drop for the backup power supply, which in this case is the V in B to get connected. In both cases for the break before make or make before break, the TCK4 series, of course, is the most suitable that can adjust for both configurations. You also asked me for an example. So this break before make comes in handy when you have a wearable device, such as earbuds with complex charging topology. And we have to define a decision tree to determine whether the charging case connected to the wall should be charged first or one of the earbuds or charging the case while charging the earbud and avoiding any voltage surge causing any issue in all these transitions. So Tala, can you give me a rundown of the design considerations we should all keep in mind here? We covered a trade-off between power density and board space, which we believe N-channel MOSFET or common drain MOSFETs will offer the most power density and seamless switching. We also recommended common source if space is not an issue, but protection is more critical in the design. We additionally discussed inrush current control and a wide SOA due to slow turn on and fast turn off and their role in an engineer's design. Furthermore, reminding about break before make or make before break, depending on the type of application requirement. And of course, the TCK4 series already addresses all of these challenges. Okay, Tala. Well, can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, today we covered power mux or power o-ring solution and types of applications that can benefit from a combination of a driver IC and a FET. Next, we reviewed five common challenges an engineer should consider when using a PowerMux solution. We also discussed the power transitions. Toshiba offers robust driver ICs under the TCK4 series, which matches well with our wide variety of MOSFETs, creating an ideal solution when it comes to power muxing or power oaring. We also offer evaluation boards, samples, and application notes to help engineers worldwide. So here's the latest selection guide for Toshiba's in-production driver IC and MOSFETs. You can see the different configurations we introduced today and the recommended MOSFETs depending on different input voltages mentioned in the middle of the slide. So certainly Toshiba continuously adds additional driver ICs and MOSFETs to the lineup. Excellent. Well, Tala, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time, Emilia, and the opportunity to discuss Toshiba's products. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Toshiba. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.